Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayawa and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today's video is something that I know a lot of people have been waiting for because in today's video we're going to learn how to set up your own WordPress website as an artist from scratch using your own domain and your own hosting. Well, using your own domain and your own hosting is an option that costs you money. It's also an option that allows you to have a website with just your name on it, just like I just purchased mayaroyo.com. And you can use this website to promote yourself as an artist. Now, what does that mean? Let's say you're an artist that you make watercolor paintings, oil paintings, digital art of any kind or photography, and you operate on various platforms. You have an Etsy store, you have a Society6 account, a Redbubble account, Fine Art America, and you don't want to have all of these in your LinkedIn bio and Instagram, and you want to have, you know, just one place where you put basically everything so people could get to know you. Not just look at something interesting and go to your Redbubble store and then look at other things, but go into your own website and see, oh, they're on Redbubble. They have yoga mats and Society6 with these items or these designs. And they also sell printables on Etsy. And you just want to have a website that revolves around branding yourself as an artist. Because when we brand ourselves as artists, we are way more memorable than, you know, that random person I just purchased something from on Redbubble. Because I wanted this tutorial to be really effective and to show you different options of things that you can do, I chose my art as photography. And I have been uploading photography, like photographs that I've done in Bucharest in Thailand, as well as in here in Israel, all over to my Fine Art America account. The thing is, I'm not going to use this website for long as a website to basically let the world know about my photography because Fine Art America has the option for an instant website already. And if that is something that is interesting to you, you can go ahead and check out the full video tutorial I've done about Fine Art America with that free website option. I will leave a link to that down below. But if you are selling on other platforms, this might be relevant to you. I just chose the photography and Fine Art America because it was the easiest way for me to just show you, you know, I'm taking a photo, I'm making a photo gallery, I'm using mock-up photos here. It was really the easiest way for me to show you everything. And that's why I chose it. But it's really important for me that while I'm doing this tutorial about photography, you'll also understand that you could share the same concept and do the same thing if you're painting with oil paintings and then taking photographs of your work and uploading them. Or if you're digitally making watercolor paintings, or if you're a graphic designer or an illustrator that makes beautiful and funny illustrations. On this tutorial, I will be showing you how to set up the website, how to choose a free theme, that already has a pre-made template with pretty much anything you need. I'll show you what to put in your about page, how to design your homepage, and generally how to use WordPress with a plugin for design called Elementor. And we're going to be doing this while I'll also show you different types of pages that you can have, like gallery pages or pages that display your types of mockups and where people may find them, as well as a cool option to instantly copy the content of a page so you don't have to build every page from scratch whenever you start. Whenever I'm watching tutorials on a new knowledge or something that I don't know how to do, especially when it comes to building websites, because even sometimes, you know, I sit and I'm looking into tutorials about different themes that I haven't tried yet. So whenever I'm doing that, I'm doing that in two stages. And the first one is I sit down with a cup of coffee and a cup of tea or whatever I want to drink at that moment, which is probably coffee, and a notebook. And I write down comments to myself. Now, I'm not writing down the stages. I'm not writing down, you know, click on post and do that. I'm not writing that at all. But as I'm watching the video for the first time, let's say, for example, I'm walking into this template and I need a good horizontal photo of myself and a good vertical photo of myself. So you will sit down and write down exactly that. I need a horizontal photo and a vertical photo. You will also write down things like I need to already download my mockups, I need to create new mockups using Playset, and I need to do, you know, various types of things. I need to work on the sizes of my photos because, for example, when I uploaded some of my photography to a photo gallery, I didn't upload the full size of the file. If I were to upload the full size of the file, number one, people could just download it and use it, and number two, my website would load super slow because I basically made my photos way smaller and reduced them from like 
five or six gigabytes to, I don't know, 200 kilos, which makes the website load way faster. You will also see some settings regarding a logo size and you'll already know to write them down to get your logo size. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Each time the birds are, la are chirping in the middle of a video, it kills me. I'm sorry. I know I should probably cut it out of the video, but I kind of like how we're all feeling comfortable with each other in this channel, so <laughs> it's kind of behind the scenes. <laughs> anyway, once you've done that and you watch the video while taking notes in a notebook or on a simple piece of paper with a pen and wrote down everything you'll need to start with this website, including how much it's going to cost you, then when you go on to Hostinger, which is the platform I'm using, or any other platform that you're using, and set up your own WordPress website, you'll know to watch the video again while setting it up, but also pausing the video. So for example, if I'm doing the theme uploading option, then you could do it with me. Pause the screen, because obviously I didn't wait for everything to be uploaded. I just, you know, for you guys, I just edit all the waiting parts out. So pause the video whenever you're doing an action on your actual website and continue watching the video to see what comes next. But before we get started, just a quick announcement. If you are watching this video as a live premiere, you might have noticed that I'm here on the chat writing back to you guys. And I'm not that talented to be able to type in without touching the keyboard. This video was pre-recorded and pre-edited and uploaded onto YouTube with a special feature of a live premiere. Live premiere basically means that for the first time that anyone watches the video, we will be watching it together like a TV show in real time. And once the live premiere is done, well, it just becomes a regular video. The reason why I love these live premieres is that because we have a live chat. So on that live chat, you can just, you know, ask me questions if like specifically I'm doing specific something or how it correlates to you guys. And, you know, just if you have like a small tiny question right on exactly what I did, you can put it in the live chat. Or, you know, let's just do what we always do and talk about food and coffee. And if you want to make sure not to miss out on live premieres because they're so much fun, you can find information about the live premieres on my Instagram story at may.arroyo, which is my Instagram handle in the story, or in our Facebook group, which I will leave a link to that down below. We have a growing community. We're already about 40 people. And I'm kind of happy about it. I'm kind of psyched that everybody seems to like, you know, just getting to know each other. And I think that Tammy started uh, a line of, you know, posts like, what have you been designing today? Which is super cool. And I also updated a few posts there so you can go ahead and check it out. Of course, I'm still waiting for your shop review links and your Ask Me Anything questions with Google Forms for each and every one of them down below. The shop reviews will be seen in future videos where I will be going over your shops with another person. And the Ask Me Anything questions will be gone through when I make my Ask Me Anything video next month. But let's stop this chat and go to my computer because we have a long day ahead of us building a full-on website from scratch to promote yourself as an artist. By the way, tomorrow's video is directly linked to that because tomorrow's video, if you are an artist, we are having an Instagram marketing video on how to promote yourself on Instagram as an artist. This is the first part out of three Instagram videos that we're going to have this month, and I'm super, super excited for them. But hey, never mind that. Let's go to my computer and have some fun building your own WordPress website with your own domain and hosting. So the very first thing that I did was to go to hostinger.com, which is my favorite web host services with domains. You have a lot of different hosting services and it sort of seems like the very expensive ones that cost you $10 a month have the best service and everybody's saying that the cheapest ones have really bad service. So hosting it for me was a really good solution because I have a lot of websites because one, they are extremely affordable and two, they have really good service. They do only offer chat service but their chat representatives are amazing. And when you just go in, honestly, you can go in and try to search for a domain name or try to search for, you know, different plans, but they automatically just give you a solution to get, you know, web hosting plans and you get a domain in SSL for free. And SSL, in case you didn't know, is the website security, which is why most of the large websites that you go into have this like lock signal at the top. So if you just click on go for it, 
it will offer you single shared hosting, which is just for one website, which is about $1 per month. And you get a free SSL and not a free domain. You also have the option for premium shared hosting, which means that you can share several websites, several domains on the same hosting, which comes with free SSL and a free domain. And I mean, this is the price for a month, so you calculate it for a year, but then you also get the SSL for free, which is $12, and a free domain for $9. And not all domains are $9. Obviously, if you wanted to buy a domain that is really, really short, it will be costing you a lot of money. But if you're just using your own name, because this will be, you know, an artist-based website, then this is a good option. So we're just going to click here and see select on this. And as you can see here, you have different types of prices to pay because this is for 48 months. I usually grab this for 48 months because it pays off because it's $100 and I have four years of hosting and I can host multiple websites. But a lot of people prefer to start with the 12 months or the 24 months. It's really up to you. And obviously, if you take just one month, then it's basically just the same price as GoDaddy, which is like $10 a month. But to me, this is a good option because, you know, the 24 months is pretty much about the same price as getting the website for four years, which is ridiculous. And then you click on and move on to entering your payment methods because I already have a hosting plan. I'm not going to do it for now, but I just want to show you the domain name researcher. So we're going to go to domains, go to domain checker. And just for example, you know, my name, so mayaroyo.com, which voila, is pretty much gonna tell you that you can't buy this domain because I already bought this domain and we're actually gonna use it for today's tutorial. But there are other options that are not .com. But let's say your name is jenniferalice.com and jenniferalice.com is available. It costs $9 a year, which means that it is that free domain in terms of purchasing your hosting plan. And, you know, let's just try another one just for fun. So, MikeVanHaling.com. It's going to be quite funny if it's going to say it's not available. And it is available. So, what you need to do is basically just purchase your own name. And I think that in a lot of ways, when people don't know how to set up, you know, for an Etsy store, or they don't know what they want to do, or they're afraid that they're going to change their mind. So, you know, if I want to make a whole website that is just about, you know, watercolor art, so if I go with May watercolor art, then I can go ahead and buy this domain. But if I have this thing in mind that tells me, you know, maybe I'm going to do like more graphic work or ink or oil paintings, then this will be quite restrictive to me. So what I will do is just buy my own name. And if, you're, if your name is very popular, it will probably be taken. So you can Try and shorten your name, add the first letter of your middle name, or just add the word art at the end, or artists, or at the beginning, the art of, like the art of May, or stuff like that. And just get a domain that really reflects you and what you want. Once you do have a domain and a hosting plan, I'm just going to quickly log in to my dashboard. And as you can see here, there are some of my domains and my hostings. I go to my hosting. And you can see that under the premium, I have several websites. And then you just go in and click on add website and it adds a domain. However, when you purchase the whole package together, like the hosting plan with a domain in SSL, the system is pretty much going to walk you through it. And if at any point you have any problem, you just click on the box here. And a nice representative will be available to chat with you. And they usually reply very fast and they are nice people and not robots. So it's quite a nice service. But once you do go into one of these websites and you go in to manage it, here you will see your dashboard with a lot of different things that you probably don't, don't need. But the thing that you will need the most when it comes to this is the auto installer for websites. And when you go here, you select WordPress and you install WordPress. You can also select WooCommerce if you plan on selling on it. Although when you install WordPress, most of the themes that do support WooCommerce will have it already installed. So you click on select and you basically install a new WordPress website. And when you do install a new WordPress website, this is what you'll be seeing. 
you'll be seeing like I wrote already official, so May Arroyo, just another WordPress site. Hello world. Welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. Edit or delete it, then start writing, which is basically everything you're going to see. You're not going to see anything other than that. And we're going to go into my WordPress now. We're going to go into the login page and you will be able to see how I basically turn this page into a full website to support my art. So what do you think? Let's get started. The way to log into your own website, which I am currently logged in, is to type in the domain name, which in my case is mayoyo.com, and then slash WP hyphen it admin. And it will take you to the admin login page where you can put in your email address and your password. This email address is the same email address you've used to connect to Hostinger. And while you do the whole WordPress installation here, it will tell you to provide them with a password. So you just write them down and you use them when you log into your own website. And when you log into your own website, it basically looks like this. And let's get started by just understanding what we have here because the dashboard is just, you know, sort of a, an easy, quick way to manage everything. But what do we have inside? We have the posts. Posts are basically articles or pages that correlates together and reunites together under what we call a blog. So on this website that you now have as an artist, you can have a blog. And we also have pages, which a lot of people don't understand the difference between. On the pages, you will only put the things that are permanent, never changing, and never updating. For example, your about page, your contact me page, if you want to have a page about where you can buy my art, all kinds of pages that are never changing. And when you do open the option for a blog on your website, then these pages will not appear on that blog. However, when you make a post, a blog post, for example, if I'm a photographer, a blog post could be talking about a day that I took, you know, traveling to Haifa and taking photos of the beach and showing some of these photos. And then at the end, commenting, you can also find these photos on prints on my Fine Art America website, or you can find these photos as printables on my Etsy store. Just, you know, a few examples. Posts can also be freebies. So, for example, if you are making gorgeous, gorgeous oil paintings and you're taking photographs of them and you're uploading them onto Redbubble Society 6 or Fine Art America as, you know, print-on-demand products, you can also make a smaller file size of that oil painting, for example, you know, like a 5 by 5 inch, and give it away for free. I also know a lot of photographers who give away free art, or free photography in this case, to promote having their own stock websites, you know, with Shutterstock or with Etsy when they sell just the photography files. There is a full video, full, full video on how to make money online using photography. I'm going to leave a link to that down below as well because it's quite useful. So these posts are basically things that are changing, are basically things that you will put under your own blog. So it's really important to know the difference between posts and page. In the middle, we have media. And media is basically all of your files that you can either take from your computer and upload onto here or upload them as we go. For example, if I'm going to be inside a blog post and I'm going to upload a photo there, that photo is automatically going to be made within the media library. Next up, we have comments, which we have like a demi comment that was made when the WordPress was set up. I'm just going to go ahead and trash it. I usually don't like having comments on my WordPress websites, especially if it's an artist website, because you will get a lot of spam comments. So what I usually do is that I upload and activate a plugin to basically deactivate all of the comments throughout this website. And you can see all of your plugins here. And plugins, in terms of my work, in terms of development, plugins are basically big, big chunks of code that are packaged into one simple solution. So for example, you will have this big chunk of code that basically allows people to fill in a contact form and contact you. But instead of being a developer and manually writing a contact form, you will have a contact plugin that you can edit, just like we're editing things here, by just filling out, yeah, they should put their names, they should put their message, and this is gonna go to my email. And we're gonna obviously go through this when we do the contact us page. And when, if you're just starting out with your own WordPress website, you don't currently need to do 
anything to the plugins for a very simple reason. WordPress runs by operating on themes. And just like plugins are big chunks of code that makes a whole process easier and accessible for people who are not developers, so are themes. So themes are just basically how my website looks. And currently my theme is 2021. And we also see here 2020 and 2019. These are actually WordPress themes made by WordPress. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna install a theme that I really, really love using that will make our lives so much easier going forward. And once we install that theme, that theme is gonna come with all the plugins that we need. So we're not gonna do anything with the plugins. We're not gonna do anything to the pages or to the blog posts because themes that I'm using that are free, by the way, to use, they have a pro option for more different types of themes and more different types of templates. But the themes that I'm using come with a free setup of all the demo content that you would see on that website. Everything that you need to download, you know, all the about us and contact us is just gonna come pre-made. And when we're talking about the best free themes for WordPress, for people who are just starting out their journey and want something accessible, you know, with templates and demo content, there are two themes that I love using the most. The first one is called Cadence. Cadence is a freemium theme, which means it's free, but has a premium option. And if you go onto their website, onto products and Cadence themes, and here we can watch the website demos that they have. And if I go into website demos here, I can see that they have many, many types, but they also tell me what do they think it's for. And of course, this person is a personal brand, which might sound good for me to be used as my website to promote the YouTube channel. However, you could also use the same template, change everything, the words and the colors, and make it about an artist. But if you're just starting out, the easiest way is to find a theme that is for artists. So this is for a personal brand, this is for a real estate agent, this is for a membership portfolio. We have a few themes that are coming up soon. Another theme for a web agency, which is not relevant to you guys, for a design course, a yoga studio, a restaurant, a print shop for e-commerce. This is literally like a print on demand website and I think that with this theme, it's the best one if you wanna actually use your WordPress website and connect it with Printful. Agency, fast food, we have here a recipe blog, a freelancer, shopping, and other things. However, there is a second website for themes that I like to use, which is called Astra. And they also have a lot of starter templates that you can start with that are ready to upload. And in this case, Astra works with four different types of web builders or design builders. Elementor, Beaver Builder, we have Breezy and Gutenberg. Elementor is my favorite. I think it's one of the easiest ones to learn when you're new, which is why I like using it when I explain things to people. So we're gonna choose Elementor. And in this case, you know, you see one of these templates and this one says agency. Agency means it costs money. So we're gonna click here and just add the free ones. And immediately you can see we have a blog for outdoor adventures, the mountain theme, the brandstorm theme. We have a theme for online health coach, simply natural, which is one of my favorite themes to be using when I'm an affiliate blogger. If, by the way, if you want me to talk about more about affiliate marketing and what that is, please let me know in the comment section below or in our group because I've been thinking about uploading some affiliate marketing content, but I don't wanna you know, overdo the channel. So let me know if that's something that is interesting to you guys. We have here like the Learn Dash Academy, an organic store. And again, you can use this theme and combine it with Printful. You can use this theme to just market your own paintings or whatever. And you can use this theme just as a blog. We have business and coaching, best-selling author, so if you're doing KDP, for example, this could be a really good theme for you guys to present yourselves as authors. We also have a meditation course theme, public speaking theme, learn baking, which obviously is, you know, I think it's like a baking blog or, you know, someone who's doing workshops. We have relationships, life coach, creative podcast, learn digital marketing, vlogger, tech startup. We have your marketing agency. And if we scroll down, we have your theater artist, music instruments, life coach, 
freelance copywriter. But if we scroll all the way down, we also have this theme for a freelance artist, which is exactly what we're looking for, right? We're looking for an artist who's a freelancer, and this theme is actually built. You can even see here in the snapshot that some of the paintings are here and a photo of her painting. So let's go visit the full site of this one and have a closer look. And when we look at this website, which is amazing and stunning, by the way, if you take the Astra theme and you put in this starter template, your website is immediately going to look just like this. So what you'll have to do is change your name and change the text, as well as change, you know, the text here, change the paintings, change the photographs, rewrite your own categories. For example, if I have like, if I'm doing photography, so I have like Bucharest or I have flowers or I have like, you know, artistic photography and obviously change your social links below. And it comes with an about me page already with a place to place your own photograph and write content about you and add more content. If you have any certificates or any grad school that you want to add in, you can, or you could just delete this. You can even write down best works and put in your photos or write down Find My Art on Redbubble Society 6 and Fine Art America. And of course, a place to connect with social links at the bottom and a contact page already made for you with a map you can activate to show your location, your address, your categories, and we can also add in a contact form. You already have pre-made categories for your designs, so people can check out your designs and buy them. And if they go into one of these pages, for example, to buy the original, this website also comes with a full WooCommerce support, which means that it's ready to become a full-on shop. Even though we're not going to be using it as a shop at the moment, because what we're going to do is we're going to refer people to purchase a design on different types of items on Redbubble, Society6, or Fine Art America, or whatever platform that you are using, or multiple platforms, you know. We're going to get started with basically taking Astra and uploading their theme onto our WordPress. And again, we are at Appearances and Themes. And what I'm going to do here is click on Add New. Now, if you've purchased the theme, if you found this glorious theme, because most of them cost like $39 or $59, you know, one-time cost. And if you've purchased your own theme, what you will do here is click on Upload Theme and upload the file here. But we have not purchased Astra. It is free. So we're going to go to Search and click on Astra. And once we have it here, we're going to click on Install and click on Activate. Once the theme is activated, I don't know if you can tell, but you sort of get an alert here. So thanks for installing Astra. Did you know Astra comes with dozens of ready-to-use starter templates? Yes, we know. We've already seen them and we already know which one we want. So install the starter template plugin to get started. And I know a lot of people who see like these kind of alerts and just click on X, but no, just click on get started because it's going to walk us through everything we need to do. And then it's going to tell us to select a page builder, which is Elemental. And we're going to search for Artist. And we have a lot more templates coming up here, all belonging to Agency. So we're going to select Free. And click on Freelance Artist. And when we have Freelance Artist, this is the home page. This is the About Me page, and this is the Contact Us page. So we can import just one of these pages, or we can import the whole website, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So we're going to click on Import Complete Site. And this is something that they ask you because they want to make sure, you know, they, they want to keep on making beautiful templates. So to serve more beautiful starter templates, we would like to know more about you. So I'm a WordPress. Is it too weird for me to do expert? I'm doing expert. <laughs> and I build websites for myself and my company. And actually, I build most of my websites for my clients. And with advanced options, we have import widgets, import customizer settings, install required plugins, and import content, which I want them all. And now it says to get access to exclusive starter templates, themes, and updates, enter your details below. So, you know, just type in my first name and my work email. 
and start importing. This does not cost money, but yeah, they're probably going to send you emails if they have new starter templates or if they have deals on their agency templates, which costs money. And what it's doing now is it's basically importing everything that we had on this website. So everything you see here on this website was made using a plugin for design called Elementor. So it's basically importing Elementor. It's also importing all of the different settings, the color settings, the font settings, and all the media files to make my website, Mayaroyo, look exactly like this one. Importing can take a few minutes and depends on the speed of your internet, it can even take up to an hour. When you do start this importing, do not close your browser. Keep it open, let it import, and you know what? Go make some coffee in the meantime, because that's what I'm gonna do. Although, I'm actually going to do it and edit it out. So you're about to see the website fully imported in three, two, one. And with the magic of video editing, right after I took a 20 minute break to chat up with you guys on our Facebook group, we are back to this as the site was fully updated. Obviously, it didn't take 20 minutes. But you know, I was outside having my smoke and having fun with you guys in the group. So that was fun. So let's just click here and see how the website looks now. And I'm reminding you, this is how it looked pretty much 10 minutes ago. And this is how it looks now, which is exactly, exactly like the website we've seen here, which is their actual demo site. So now that we have this website here, what are we going to do with this? Because I'm thinking, you know, I need to make it more me. I need to make it more about myself. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to click on customize. And the customize option on WordPress basically allows me to change a lot of things in this website while I'm looking at it. And that doesn't mean changing the text because the text here is controllable by editing that specific page. The text here and the pages that we have here we need to manually make, but we can change some of the settings and I don't know if you've noticed, but on this website, you know, this text overlaps the photo, but in here it doesn't. And that's for a very simple reason. While I have my dashboard open, I can see the website as it would look if the website would be slightly smaller, like the web screen. But if I hide controls over here down below, then I will see it as anyone else would see it from a computer. I can also reopen this menu, click on tablet, to see how this would appear on a tablet as well as on a mobile phone, which is kind of pretty. But let's go back to our web view and go over global settings because we're just going to go over them, you know, just clicking the boxes. Let's go over to global settings where we have typography as the first one. And here we can determine the fonts and the colors and the sizes of the text throughout the website's main text areas as well as the headings. Let's just go into base typography where we have the Poppins font selected and it's on a normal size, like normal width. And if, for example, I will change it to 20, all the text will become much bigger, which will affect the size of the photo. And if I click on the control, it will basically change everything. So I want to keep it on 15 because it's a good size. I can also make the entire text like semi bold. But I don't want to do that because I don't want everything on my website to be like this. Usually the normal default settings are the best. That's why they're default. And I can change the entire font to be something else. But I really do love pop-ins. I think it's really good for artists of all kinds. It's very readable. It's somewhat delicate and artistic, which is why they chose this font for this theme. And if I go back to heading, as you can see, the text here, the font here is different from this one because this one is play for display. I can make it match by click, quickly selecting pop-ins again. And this might look better for some people who want, you know, to have just one font. But you can also just look around at the other things that they have and choose something that is good for you. I really like the first one, but I want to find something that might be more interesting to combine with the pop-ins as a text. Obviously not this one, unless you're a gamer. Like Quantico is really good for gamers. I do love Quicksand, but I'm not sure how it's going to look with the pop-ins. I think it's way too similar 
to be with the poppins. Maybe if I make it a bit bolder. I actually think it's a good combination, but you know, let's give it another whirl. Okay, so I've never seen Revelia before and I'm quite curious. Okay, it's awful. I mean, it's a good font. <laughs> it just really doesn't fit here. I really like ribeye, although I don't know how it would look here. I think it's kind of fun and kind of quirky, even though I think I prefer the ribeye like the normal one and not the Marlowe. I think it is kind of cool, but maybe it's too, I don't know, maybe it's too much. I don't know. Let's collapse this menu and look for ourselves. I kind of like the combination, you know? I'm going to leave it like this. And now we're going to go back. And we're going to go to colors. And as you can see here, the theme color is basically blue, which we can change. So, for example, my photography feels kind of green to me. I have a lot of various, you know, plants and all kinds of greens and flowers. And I think it will really look good with the green. But as you can see, it only changes the button. And if I scroll down, you know, all the buttons are becoming green because the settings of this specific banner was chosen to be blue on that page. But I really do like this specific theme color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the color and I'm going to copy paste it to one of my notes. So these are my notes and I'm going to write down green template color and put it down because I might want to use it. Like if I'm going to go back to this one inside the page, I'm going to want to use it for sure to fit this one. Now that we've closed this, let's match the link color to be the exact same. And if we go to one of our pages here, you can already see that the links have changed, but they haven't changed here because this is a different type of setting. So we are done with our basic setting here to set up the colors, the main and initial colors. We can also change the whole colors of the text because they're not black at the moment. We can also change them, let me just save this one quickly, to full on black. And this is the text color, not the heading color. And obviously it's not gonna change everything automatically because we also have things that are driven from the page setting. So the text color would be black, the link hover, I'll leave it like this blue thing. The link hover, which basically means when I go over a link, I'm gonna enter in our green one and make it slightly darker. And the heading colors, let's try our green again. We'll change everything to green, but maybe this one is a bit too much, right? Let's try to find like a black green kind of thing or I can go with orange to sort of fit what I want like if I want to make like a floral theme because I usually make flowers and I think I kind of like to have like a magenta kind of green website I don't know if you guys like this idea but what I'm doing is obviously saving the magenta color and with that choice being made I'm going to change it here as well and then I'm going to go back go to buttons and as you can see here, they don't really have the text color or background color because they just take it from the theme. So we're going to leave it as is. And I don't know if you can see it, but already this is turning magenta when I hover over this. So let's move back and get out of the global settings and go to our header builder. As you can see up top, we have the logo, the menu, and a button. And it's actually here, the logo, the menu, and the button. The button can be to buy your paintings, the button can be to go to your Redbubble store, the button can be to go to your Etsy store or to your Instagram. So I'm going to leave it right now. But if you want to make any changes, you just flip this side over and it comes up to this side. But as I said before, when you're buying a good theme, when you even if you're downloading it for free, these themes were made by people who know marketing, who know website development, who know design. So their initial concept might be something that is good for you to lean on and just keep it as is. And then we're going to go back. And we also have the footer builder, which right now consists of a copyright announcement. And then we have a widget here and socials. So if you flip them over, you see they change their position. And if you want to edit one of them, it's really, really easy. Once you hover over this, you just click on this button. And you can edit your Facebook link here, your Behance, Twitter, Instagram. Let's say we have Pinterest as well. So let's put Pinterest down. And I'm pretty sure they will have the icon for Pinterest. 
Yep, it's here. And if you don't have like Twitter, just delete it. And we have all three of those. You can also choose to show the labels of them to make it displayed better this way and align them to the sides or in the center. And here we edit the design of how they look. We can make the icons way bigger. We can space them out. Let's make them a bit smaller though. It's quite big. And we can change the radius of these ones to make them more like a bit more square. I kind of like it when it's a bit more square. I like it this way. And we can use a color type if we want to use a custom one or the official color types driven from their compute from their system or customize the icon colors and you know customize their backgrounds. Let's see if I have the magenta here. So I have the magenta here or I can just use my green. And again, it's very important that you save up these colors if you want to continue using them. And I can change also the color of the display. And again, it's not something that you, you might not want to do it exactly as is because it might not just be as pretty. But if you just want to play around with the settings, this is how you do it. And now let's go back. And here we have widget one. Widget one is a text widget that simply says connect. But I don't want to say connect. Maybe I want to say something else. Maybe I want to say, let's get social or follow me on social media. So this is what I'm saying here. Going back and the copyright is copyright the year and usually just, you know, leave it as is. Let's go back. And as we can see here, this has already changed. And we're going to WooCommerce settings and we're not going to do anything with WooCommerce settings. I'm actually going to cancel WooCommerce option for this website as soon as we're done with the customization, because this is not about how to set up your own website and sell on it. I'm thinking about making a different tutorial on that. Although if you want to start selling, the easiest way would be to get a Shopify website. It will be way easier for someone who's not a developer to manage. And here we have menu control, which we can basically decide what's going to be on our top navigation but we still don't have the pages that we want. So we're not going to do anything with the menu control at the moment. And here we have the home page settings and the home page is a place called home, which is this page. And with that being said, let's go over to our header because I really do want to edit these ones. And I don't know if you've noticed, but when you click on it, you go to your, basically to your logo design or to your design area. And this is the primary header. And here you have the logo where you can update your own logo by dragging and dropping it here. And when I look at this logo, I can go in onto Media Library. It tells me that the recommended size for a logo would be 180 by 60 pixels. But if I go onto this logo, it's way longer than that. So I can either design a logo based on their settings or design a logo with these dimensions using probably Canva. My second option, if I don't want to do all of that, is just to remove the logo from both my computer and the Retina logo, and I will choose to display my site title. My site title is Mayaroyo Official at the moment, but I can just change it to Mayaroyo, and that would be the title of the website, as well as my current sort of logo. And I will go into Design, where I can choose the type of font, like the size of the font that I want to show here. And now I want to edit this part, our menu. And I want to edit the design of the menu because it's still sort of, you know, blue. And I don't want that. We have here the text and the links on them. So I'm changing the text to black, all black. And as you can see, it already changed. And the link color, I'm thinking to make it the green one. And that would mean here. This one, let's choose the magenta. And this is all about, you know, what does this button do? Because right now the magenta is the one currently we're on. But if I hover over, it becomes green. But I think I want it the other way around. I want the, the one that is selected to be the green and the hover over to be magenta. And it's already changed. And you can see here the changes that I've made. And I'm going to go back to basically get out of editing it go to edit the button. And as you can see here, the button says by painting and the link is to nowhere. 
So here you can write something like Etsy store, if you're selling printables or any kind of stuff. You can change this button to be Instagram. You can change this button to be shop for my art. And here you add a link to whatever you want to do. And I decided that I want to use this website to promote myself as a photographer. So I'm going to quickly go to Fine Art America. Now I already have a website for Fine Art America made by Fine Art America and Pixels. This is already my own website with everything driven from it. And if you want to see how I got it, you can go ahead and check out my Fine Art America video. It's quite fun. But I'm using this one, the Fine Art America one, not because I want to promote Fine Art America on my own website. Personally, in a few weeks, that whole Maya Oya website is going to be basically content relating to the YouTube channel. But I want you to be able to quickly adapt. So if I'm using like the Fine Art America link, you know, you can use your Society6 or your Redbubble. So let me just grab the link here above and go and place it here. And this is important because I want this to open in a new tab. I want if someone goes into your website and sees your paintings and want to go and buy them on Society6, they will go on a different tab and not get stuck here. And I can also design the button specifically if I want to change the color of the button right here. But I kind of like it how it is. So let me just go back. We're pretty much done with all of our settings right now. So we're going to hit publish because if we don't, everything we've just done is going to go to trash. So let's hit on publish. This is so much fun. Okay, so this was the website. And then it looked this way. And now let me just duplicate this real quick because it's going to reload this one again. So we went from here to here to here. And now what we need to do is edit this page because obviously this shouldn't be blue. And when you're in a page, you can already see how to edit the page or edit it with Elementor. Editing the page itself will lead you to a dashboard. You know what? Let's just go in. Editing a page basically leads me to a blank edit page because this is done with Elementor. And I can go over and see if it has a featured image. You know, I don't need that one because it's the main like home page. If I want to allow comments on this page. Or if this page will be like a default template, if it will be like Elementor, but it was already chosen for me. I don't need to do anything here, but to click on edit with Elementor. And again, what I have here is the Elementor page. And if I quickly click on this one, then we're going to see the whole website view. But let's adjust it. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is the main area. This goes on to everything. If I click on X, it's going to delete everything. But then Command Z or Control Z, it brings it back. And if I click on this, this is like the right column, and this is the left column. But I also have each and every one of these elements available for me to use as I want to change. So I'm going to click here, and it says Christina Jones, but that's not my name. My full name is Maya May Arroyo. And it will come up looking good, even though on the shrinked version, it looks kind of weird. And here I have the title. I can put a link to that title, even though I don't want to. I can change the size of this title to be large, where it was currently was extra, extra large, and even like the default, which is bigger. If I go into style, I can choose the color of the text, but I don't want to edit the color of the text. I want to edit the color of the background. Let's go to advanced settings, where we have background colors, and we see this color here. So let's just quickly go back, and I want to grab my green one, and just place that here. But I don't know if you can see, this color is not just a color, but it's also a bit transparent. Let's change it up a bit. And if I move it here, you can see that it fully goes over the photo. But if I go back to these settings and hit transparent, once I collapse it, the photo is a bit more visible underneath it. And I'm not sure that I like it this way. I'm not sure. I, maybe I will change my color schemes. Obviously, I will change it later on because I'm not having this website. But maybe I don't want it to say Miami Royal. Maybe I want it to say I'm a photographer. And in your case, this could be I'm a painter, I'm an artist, or welcome to my website, welcome to my art. Or, you know, you could just write, hey, I'm May. Which I kind of like this concept and idea. So I'm going to leave it like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this title where it says colors and shapes inspire me. And here I'm going to write something relating to what I do. And if I want to make this about my photography, then I'm going to write something about that. Again, 
you can even leave it as colors and shape inspire me, even though like if you're any kind of artist. Or write down, I love watercolors, oil paintings are my best friend, I don't know, anything you want. So let me just dive in deep into this, which is kind of what I like to write here. And again, you can edit the style, the text color. And as you can see, the text color here says none because it just takes it from the customizations that we've done. And here is a great place for you to do something that we call play my favorite game. What does this button do? Because you really need to go dive deep in and try different things to understand the full aspect of this platform or this Elementor plugin. Because if I were to do a full tutorial on just Elementor plugin, it would be like seven hours long. So what you can do if you know you want to make changes you might regret is that you update the page right now. So if I will make any changes that I will regret, I can either, you know, control Z and cancel them, or I can just leave the editor, tell it not to save my settings and come back. Because right now I've saved everything that I've done. Moving on to the text here. The text here should be a text about yourself. Let's try and think about something to write. So what I wrote down here under my life in photos is, hey, I am Maya Royal. I have spent most of my adult years traveling the world and living in various places. I'm a graphic designer and, web build and website builder, but my true passion always was photography. I would take long breaks while working on projects for clients and just go out and photograph my environment. Having lived in places like Bangkok, Helsinki, Bucharest, Tel Aviv, my scenery has always changed. I decided to take my photography hobby and turn it into one of my main businesses with sharing my photos with the world and making them available for purchase on canvases, prints, framed fine art prints, as well as items like pillows, tote bags, towels, and more. And what I think that I need to do here is edit this a bit because I think I forgot some stuff here. Also, I want to change a bit of the lines like this one to make it a bit smaller. I want to like bring it a bit up and also the line where I would. It's really good like you know, just brainstorm and write down stuff and then look at how they appear on the website and just, you know, shrink them back up or move them back down. I think I like it better like this, but I also don't like that the tagline is here or the hey I'm May is here because I already wrote that down. So I'm going to delete the first line because it kind of repeats itself and see how it looks now. I kind of like it. And what I'm going to do here is go and on the discover collections button, I'm going to write down by my photo, my photo, my photographs, sorry, by my photographs or photography prints, for example. And the link would be either to my Fine Art America or to my shop in Fine Art America as I go to art prints. Like, you know, you can put in like the medium ones, like the medium links. So I'm going to choose the art prints because I wrote down like, you know, buy my prints. Where am I? I'm here. <laughs> Photography prints. This is the link. And let's look at link options and open it in a new window, which is crucially and important. I can also choose an icon, which is to upload an SVG myself or choose just this one from the icon library or different ones. Let's see if they have something that says art. If they have like a painting one. Let's try painting. Oh, we have paint. But this is not good for me. This would be good for someone who's like, you know, an artist. Let's look at camera. Ooh, there is camera. I think I like it with a camera here. Cool. Oh, I like this one. Photo, by photography prints. Okay. And here it says, welcome to my website, because that was the title. But you can change it. You can do like, explore my paintings, which if I click here, I can see that it's trying to get products from here, like it's featured products, but I don't have any products. So I'm going to leave it a bit blank now. And I'm going to think about what I want to say, what I want to do. And honestly, for your first page, I wouldn't say that much. I would leave it a bit as is for people to go on and scroll better. So I can just delete all of these and sort of make it my own as I go. Because right now, this is the website. And for some people, this is a really good way to start because it's very focused and people don't go, go lost. So they can just quickly go into these categories above me. And it's really easy when you're just starting out because otherwise you're just going to, you know, babble on and do things that might not be good. 
But what I can do is open like a mini gallery here. But I really do like the whole, you know, leaving it a bit blank. But I can go here and, for example, let's say you have some paintings that you really like to push forward, or in my case, photography, and you want to do something like, you know, uh, sort of a section of like my most popular designs or my latest artworks. So what I'm going to do is add a new structure and just add a, plan a blank structure. Go here, drag in a heading. As you can see, you can drag in a heading to this place, or you can take the heading. Let's just drag it here. And I want the heading to be centered, and I write down something like my latest works. And under this heading, I want to put in photos, right? So let's say I want to put in three images, okay? But I want the images to have a text under them. So you can have it an image box, which is basically if you throw it all the way here, is an image, a, sub, a heading, a smaller one, and text. But I'm not sure that I want all of it. So if I delete the whole text, it just goes away. Or if I bring back the text and delete the heading, it goes away, which is something that I prefer. So what I'm going to do is delete the heading. And let's just, you know, go and check out my latest works if I want to, you know, push them forward. So I have my flower photograph. I want to have, let's just look in here. I want to promote this one, the Uniri River. And I also want to promote this photograph, which was actually taken right here in Modine, about a kilometer from my house. So if I want to have all three of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Fine Art America, and obviously you can do it with Society6 or Redbubble. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to choose a frame print because I like that one better. And I'm going to choose a very large print size. And I'm going to go into the mock-up. And I want to try and find like a good one here. And I want to download this mock-up. And in here you write down, you know, my photography, write down a bit of something, but I'm just leaving it as is Uniri River Miami Arroyo. Here I will go to the art print. I think the art print, let's have a look at this mock-up here. Nah, don't like it. Let's try and see not just the art print, but something else. Let's grab a metal print. It's kind of interesting, right? And Type in like you know a larger size. And obviously you can make your own mock-ups at this point. I'm just quickly grabbing all of them, even if it's the same photo, because you know, I just wanna do it for the sake of this tutorial and not for the sake of the website. And the other one was uh, 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 this flower. And again, I'm gonna choose I have an art print, so I did a frame print, I did a metal print. Let's do like a wood print. And choose a very big size and go back into this mockup and download it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to Elementor and when I click on the photo I can upload things from myself, look at the media library, I can even have like free images from Pixabay if I want to, which I probably should have used. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly grab all of these and just drag them here. And I'm going to choose the first one, which is the Uniri River. And here in the title, it's driven from the name of the artwork itself. So, for example, if this was like Uniri River Bucharest Photography Maya Maya Royal Photography Prints or something like that. And you would basically copy paste the whole thing into the alt text, which is technically what Google knows about the photo. So, again, it shouldn't just be this. This should be like Uniri River Bucharest Romania Photograph Maya Royal photography print or frame print and then insert my media and what I'm going to do here on the description I'm going to write down all caps Uniri River photography for example or I can just you know grab all of this and put it as the title but I kind of like it this way and the link would be to this specific product like this with opening it in a new window. And I can choose if I want it on the right side of the photo, left side, or at the top. And I can go into style, 
and basically edit the content. If I want to add, like, you know, if I want to adjust the title, if I want to work on the topography of the description, let's say I want to make the description a bit bigger, like this. And right now I have one of those, and it's nice because it already has the link on it, and the and the like the text is really what I wanted. So what I will do is I will go back here, and you see intersection. So I'll click on intersection and put it inside, and grab this photo and put it on the left, and then duplicate it, and drag it to here. And as you can see, the photo is a bit small; like it looks really small inside. So what I need to do here is to go here on the image and raise the style to, let's say, 50. It could also be 100% of the size that I have available. I'm going to quickly do the same with this one. Take the style and the width to 100%. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the full, like, on side and duplicate this one. So what I'll have is three of those because I do have three photos. So on the center one, I'm going to go back to content and change my image to this one. This I will change my image to this one. And now what I have to do is also change the text. So here the text would be succulent, blooming, because you know it is what it is. And link will be to this one. And of course, make sure that it opens in a new window. And this one was a peaceful spot, for example, and I'm going to grab this link here onto this. And this would appear as my latest works. So let's just quickly update this and go onto my website and refresh it. So what you see is, hey, I'm May, my life in photos, photography prints, and my latest works which if someone clicks on one of them, it opens a new tab in a new window directly to what I wanted it to go. But it doesn't cancel off this one. And don't forget that you have your Facebook, your Pinterest, and Instagram, which now I see have the hover over in black, which is super important for us to go over what we do and make sure that we did it right. And this part cannot be edited from the Elementor because it belongs to customization. So let's just quickly go back here, click on Customize, and as you can see, everything changed here as well. Hover over this part and go back to the design. So what I'll do with this one is I'm just gonna go, and you see this is the icon color, but this is the background, which is the regular and the hover. So I'm just gonna change the hover, maybe to hover it to the magenta one. And it's too bright, let's just make it pink. And I can do it something like this. And let's just save this real quick. Exit. And now that we're done with the home page and we've adjusted our buttons, I think it's time we dive deeper into our content pages and basically our menu. So I'm gonna go back to just, you know, click on my name on my website where it leads me to the dashboard and I'm gonna go to pages. Now I have here a lot of cart pages and checkout pages, which were driven from the fact that I have WooCommerce. So I'm gonna to go to plugins because I don't wanna use this website to sell. That's a different tutorial altogether and a totally different process. I just wanna show a website that features an artist. So for example, if you have oil paintings and you take photos of them and you sell them on Redbubble, on Society6, on Fine Art America, on Etsy, if you're making all types of graphics art, or if you even have originals that people can contact you to sell, then this is a good website option for you, as well as if you're doing anything printable on Etsy, and you want to have a website that offers freebies for that. And I'm also thinking that I might do a tutorial on having a website to offer freebies. Please let me know in the comment section below if that is something that is interesting to you. So while I'm here on my plugins, I'm going to go ahead to WooCommerce and click deactivate and apply because we cannot delete activated plugins so I'm going to quickly click on them again and delete them because I don't need them and now I'll go back to my pages and I'm going to mark all the pages that I don't need like the cart the checkout my account which also belongs you know 
to that type of setting. Bulk action, move to trash, apply, go back to my trash, empty it, and get back to my pages. So I have an about me page, a contact page, a home page, and a page called paintings that I have no idea what it is. So let's go have a look. Oh, so the painting page basically leads me back to the front page? No, it leads me back to a shop page, which does not exist anymore. Let's also delete the sample page and the draft for policies. And of course, the shop page. And now, because I'm a photographer, I'm trying to think about other pages that I might want. And you can have different pages based on your design style or your art style. So for example, if you have oil paintings, like original oil paintings, so you can have a page for original oil paintings and a page for my paintings to buy, like prints of my paintings. You can also have a page, let's say you'll have watercolor art and some of it is abstract and some of it is portraits and some of it is still life or some of it is scenery. So you can have pages for those. So I'm going to take up my life as a photographer, you know, what I do and what I sell, and I'm going to try to make up a few pages. So I'm quickly opening three new tabs for my pages to add three new pages. And I'm going to go to the first one where I'm going to write down Bucharest photography. I can also write down actually lakes and rivers or cityscape or stuff like that. So maybe city life would be a good option or even by the water, which sounds nice to me. And that page is going to be completely blank. I'm not going to do anything with this page other than publish it. I will move on to the next page and I will call it Flowers of the World or something like Beautiful Nature. And again, do nothing but publish it. And then I will go to the third page and maybe write down something about how where to get my art or what my art is available on. And, you know, let's just write down art, wall art, for example, and publish that. And also go back to the pages and add another new page and call it, for example, because I'm looking into what products I have in Fine Art America that I've activated. I mean, you can go ahead for your Redbubble shop and see what else you have activated. But if I'm going to Fine Art America, which is what I want to do now, so I have the wall art options. But I also have like the throw pillows and the tote bags, like home design or face masks. And I want to find like a category for them. So maybe like, you know, accessories or items with my photograph. But I'm thinking more like accessories because you can have like multiple pages. You can have like a page for pillows, a page for yoga mats, a page for notebooks. But maybe write down like... um real life i'm trying to figure out like how to call the rest of this stuff the rest of the merch that isn't maybe like home decor like home and accessories or home decor so let's just go here and write down home decor although now that i'm thinking about it home decor might also include art so i'm going to go back to the wall art page and write down wall art and decor and that would be you know for most of my items but what I have to do now, because I've already published this page, is go to Premlink, and it says wall art. So I basically have to write down manually in the core, mind the, of course the hyphenates, and update this page. And now I'll take this page and write down accessories or fashion or whatever you want, or everyday items. And of course, publish it. Another thing that I'm thinking that I want to do is I want to change the about me page maybe i want to make it together with a contact page like about and contact or get in touch or artist info for example so i'm going to quickly edit it using the quick edit option and write down artist info and copy this one here and as you can see the date is 2017 and that is because well this is the date that the template was made so i'm just going to quickly change it to like you know april 2020 and update it and with that being said I'm going to completely trash the contacts page and as you can see here I have all these other pages so I'm going to go and hover over appearance and click customize and as you can see here instead of the about it's artist info and the contact is gone 
So I'm going to scroll down here and go to menus, top navigation. And as you can see, all of these are in valid because we don't have these pages anymore. They were like pages that were made for product. All these floral and settings were made for product and we don't have them anymore. But what we do want to add here is go to add items and then pages and click on everyday items, wall, and art, wall art and decor, beautiful nature, and by the water, which are my main pages. And now I'm going to quickly go over them, drag beautiful nature at the top. And as you can see, I have a way of basically moving things to be under each other, which I don't want at the moment because I don't want anything to be a sub category. And it's kind of hard to edit it sometimes from this page. So I'm just going to click on publish. And I'm going to close this one up. Go to appearances, menus. And here I am with the top navigation menu, and I can easy, easier move this one around. So I have a home, artist info, everyday items, wall art and decor, by the water, beautiful nature. And by the water and beautiful nature are basically categories of the things that I promote, like my galleries. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to click on custom links and the URL is just going to be a hashtag, which means nothing. And then the link text would be photo galleries and add this to menu. I'm going to drag this to be below artist info. And then I'm going to take beautiful nature and put it on the side as well as by the water and save my menu. And now if I go back to my home page, I can see artist info, photo galleries that expands into these pages, everyday items and wall art and decor. And the first thing I'm going to start with is editing the artist info page because that's the one that is most important to us at the moment. And I'm going to just close all of these add pages and go into plugins because I don't have any plugin here for anyone to fill in a contact form. So I'm going to click on add new plugins. And again, if you already have a plugin, just click on upload and choose your file. If you don't, let's click here, contact. And here we have several types of contact forms, widgets and plugins. And I usually use contact form seven because I really do like it. It's one of my favorite contact forms. So I'm just going to quickly install this one and activate. And then I'm going to go to artist info and click on edit with Elementor. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't changed this girl's photo on the main page. So let me just show you how to change a photo using the about page. So I'm going to click on the photo and then it's going to say choose image. So I can choose an image from here. I can upload an image of myself or upload free images from Pixabay. And free images from Pixabay obviously won't do that because you know this should be a photo of you. Let me just find a good photo of me to upload. And I want it to have the same appearance because as you can see, this photo size really goes well with this you know, whole design. So I'm gonna click on this photo. And as this photo is open, I can see that it's 800 by 1095 pixels. So I'm gonna find a photo of me and crop it to this size. You can crop it using whatever tool that you are using or crop it using Canva. So I have this cool photo of me that I want to use for the about page and it's being uploaded. And of course the name of the photo would be Maya Maya Royal Photography, Maya Royal Photographs and the alt text as well. But I'm just going to insert it for now. And I like how it looks. And now there is a place to write down a description here I'm guessing for the photo. So what I'm going to do is write down a beautiful sunny day. I'm basically describing this. So if you had a photo of yourself painting, then you can write down me while painting, you know, my latest piece or, you know, a photo of you in your studio or a photo of you with your computer or whatever art that you do. So for me, it's going to be a beautiful sunny day taking photos at Tine uh, Toloi Park in Bucharest, Romania. And I'm thinking that maybe it's a bit too long. No, it kind of looks nice. Let's just drop a line over here. And I can also like go down and really, really try and investigate this for yourselves. Like, you know, go into style. You can align this to the middle and really try and look into this yourselves because otherwise, you know, it's not going to be something that I can cover 
all of it and all at once. Just, you know, go over here, try to change your topography. And remember, if I like it like this, I'm going to update it, make sure that I saved it. And then if I want to change it and make a few changes and see what it does, if I don't like them, I just exit and not save. But I like what it says right now. And on the about me, I'm not going to currently write anything because, you know, it's all about what you do, the type of thing that you do, you know, where you sell your art. But I do want to write some stuff over here. And what I will do here is I'm going to write down basically something about what I have to show people, like what kind of photographs I do and, you know, where they can buy them. So I can write down something like this. So what I wrote down here is by the art, the photos that I have taken in my travels can be found available on print and home decor items on my Fine Art America profile. Feel free to check it out or visit my Instagram for more. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark by the item, by the art and put it as a heading number three or number two, which are different sizes of headings that Google understands what this section is about. And it's a very small subsection, so it's going to be heading three. And then with the paragraph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my shop for prints and put it as a link here. So I'm going to mark down Fine Art America and Control B to make it bold or just click here and insert a link. And when I insert a link, I click on apply. But after apply, I'm going to edit it again, open it, make it sure that it opens in a new tab and update. I also wrote down to check in my Instagram account, which is Instagram at Arroyo Photography, which I keep forgetting to update. So I'm going to go back to this one and to Elementor, grab the Instagram Command B or Control B, depends if you're using a Mac or a regular computer, open link in a new tab. And I have this here. And what I can do with this gallery section is basically edit the images that were selected because they've selected 10 images but I want to edit them so I go back here and I delete all of them because they're paintings and I'm a photographer and of course that I will upload my own photographs I will upload them a bit smaller and I will crop them all to the same size so I will just be uploading basically several ones of my photographs let me just do it real quick and I'm back I don't think you even noticed that I was gone but I went in and I edited some of my photos to be 800 by 800 pixels. And the reason for that is because my photos are very, very big and the original files are very, very big. And I, first of all, I don't, want, I don't want to put them out there for people to just take them. And second of all, I don't want them to weigh that much because larger photos really slow down your computer, like your website upload to anyone. So I just uploaded all of these photos into my gallery and I want to choose this one for being first and insert my gallery. And now my gallery is going to change. And I also want to link my gallery. And what I want to do with my, my gallery link is to basically link it to my Fine Art America. So on the link, I'm going to write down custom URL, put in my Fine Art America link, and open in a new tab. I can also do it for the words by my art or whatever I want. Let's just see how it looks for the beginning about me, la 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 la, la by the art. Nice. Here, by the way, the gallery can also display mockups. You can also display your bags or whatever you want, or just delete this section altogether. Here I have certificates, which I'm not really interested in showing because I don't have any certificates of being a professional photographer, but you can have these pages or these photos basically link to any of your other pages, or you can simply delete this section. What I can do here is write down here, contact me. You can write down, like, for example, a whole paragraph of if someone wants, you know, original copies of your paintings or stuff like that. Or like, I just write down, contact me. And because I'm a photographer and everything is on Fine Art America, like this is the point of the website, then I don't really have anything to write down. But you can also write down, you know, like add a text editor and write down if you want to get physical copies or original paintings, you can contact me, yada, yada, yada. And what I will do with this section is basically delete it. And I'm going to update this page. And I'm going to go back to my plugins where I can see a contact section, which was made because of my contact seven plugin. 
And now what I will do is I'll go to contact form one and hit edit. And basically this contact form asks for people's names, their emails, the subject, and the message. And that's what I wanted to do. But let me just look at what I wanted to do as well. This is who is going to show me it's from. So if anyone is going to send me an email through this contact page, I will see WordPress at mailware.com. This is the subject and the email, and this is how I'll see it when it's, you know, coming from other people. You can see here that the mails are being sent to site admin email, which is my email. But if you want it to be sent to a different email than the one that you use to open your Hostinger account, just click here and change it. But for me, it's fine. And I really want to use my contact form one because I think it's good. And you can see here, there is a short code. So I'm going to copy this short code because I might need it. And I'm going to go to Elementor and I want to add something here. So I'm going to go to all of my widgets and search for contact. Well, that's not the name. Let's search for form. So all of my forms are enabled because I don't think that it reads the fact that I have here contact form seven. But what I do have here is a short code. So I'm going to grab the short code and put it under contact me. And in the short code, write down, well, basically paste what I wrote down here and update. And now I have a contact sheet displayed here. And then the let's get social which is our sort of ending for each and every page. I'm reminding you, this area is for all of your pages and it's manageable through the customization box, not the pages. And now that I'm done and I've hit update to save it, I can close this window, go back to the site and see how everything looks. So this is my first page, which of course you need to change your photo. There is the artist info. And if I click on Fine Art America, it will open in a new window. Very slowly, I might say, I might add. And if I click here, it will go to my Instagram. If I click here, this also goes to Fine Art America. And again, you can have it go to your Redbubble, to your Site 6, and you can have like two of these, three of these, whatever. And a contact form for people to contact you if they need anything. And this is enough for me. But what I have here is I also have other four pages that I want to do something with. So one of them is called Beautiful Nature. So I'm just going to go to it. And this is a gallery page. This is a page to basically show off some of my latest photography that relates to beautiful nature. So what I will do with it is I will go to Edit Page, Edit with Elementor. And what I do here now is I'm adding a section. Going here, choosing a heading. And as we said, this is called... I, I even forgot which page we were editing. Let me just have a look at the settings. We're editing beautiful nature. Sorry, guys. Beautiful nature. And under the words beautiful nature, I want to have a text. So I'm dropping in a text editor. And I'll go to style and I'll center it as well because I'm a huge person. I'm, like I'm a huge align center kind of girl. And write down. So what I wrote down here is a collection of photographs I took of the beauty of nature. These photos were taken while I, while I do my nature walks and include the flowers of the world, along with trees, leaves, succulents, and more. And what I'm doing here right now is I'm gonna go and look at it as a whole. Choose the whole thing. You can do it or you can leave it as it is, but this is something I like to do for the style. Go to the style and go to background. And the background is gonna be a classical background which includes a color. And for the color, I'm actually going to choose the magenta color. And I hope that you already know what the problem is going to be because everything else is going away. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this, go to style, and edit the text color of my heading to be white, as well as edit the text color here in style because it's not very visible. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy magenta again and drag it to like sort of like pink-ish. I can also do this one, you know, not even pink. Let's just go back here, click on this, and change it to the green, because, you know, it's nature. Maybe it's better to have this, you know, as green, or even, like, very strong green, and then change this back to a bright green. I can also change the topography a bit. I can increase the size sort of a bit. I also have the line height that I can mess around with to make it a bit shorter or bigger or whatever I want to do with it. I can change the weight, you know, the bulkness 
of the text and just do whatever I want with it. So I kind of like it this way, but what I need to do now is I want to space it up a bit. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go over to advanced and type in padding as 20. And again, you can play around with this and it's very recommended, but I don't want everything to be padded. I want to have them separately. So the top is going to be 40 and the bottom is going to be 30 or 40, but nothing on the sides. And I'm going to go back to beautiful nature content. This is an H2 tag, but I want to make it a bit larger. Extra large, maybe? Yes. I think that's how I like it better, but I want to reduce the size here. So I'm going to click on this and the bottom is going to be 30 pixels. And I can also go back to the style and the background doesn't have to be a color. The background can also be a photo. And for example, if I choose one of these photos, obviously it's not going to look as good because that photo kind of repeats itself because this is a very long area. So I'm just going to quickly go to one of my photos that I've already uploaded and try to find a nice, because this is, it says nature. Try to find a nice photo that I've put on the nature scenes and make sure it's horizontally aligned so I can use it. So I'm going to grab one of these photos. I'm going to just put it in a different folder as a copy because it's very important that if you edit your own photos to make them a bit smaller to fit a website, it's not going to affect the actual size of the actual photo because I'm going to reduce the width of this photo to 2000 pixels and then crop it completely. And this is the photo that I will use as a background. So I'll click here on image again and grab this photo and throw it in here and insert. And as you can see, it appears on the background and I can play around with the position. I can make sure that it's below. Let's look at the bottom one. And you can also use free images from Pixabay, which I think I will use right now because I'm not really going to use this website to promote my photography of nature. And obviously you should use the ones that you're using, but I just want to get on with the tutorial. So I'm just going to pick up one of these and save and insert. So what it does is basically it downloads this photo onto my media folder. And it's not going to be at the bottom left, it's going to be at the top, or maybe at the center center. And what I can do with this photo, even though that I have a photo here, I need to first look at the repeat one and say not repeat. And then the size is going to be to cover. But this photo is a bit too bright for what I wanted. So I can also go to background overlay, overlay with color, and overlay the photo with a black color. And that way I can still have my all my heading in the white way that I wanted. And it sort of fits. So I really like it this way. So I'm going to save the, sa the changes first. And what I want to do here is sort of share my gallery. So I'm going to add in one new slot, click here and type in gallery and add in the basic gallery from WordPress. Click on images and obviously at this point you will add, you know, the own images that you have for this category, but I'm adding all of them anyway and create a new gallery, insert. And here I can select the size that I want them to be at and how many photos repeat per area. So I can just put it like this. I can make them way larger. And at this case, you see that this is a thousand pixels large, but it doesn't come off as large because, you know, it's still a three by three. But if I'm going to have it like on a two, then it opens up. And what I can do here is to have a light box, which means that it opens this way if someone clicks on them. Or if I go back to edit my gallery, I can delete the light box. So if someone clicks on it, nothing happens, which is something you might want to consider to not do it as a light box. It, it, it's up to you. So let's say you've uploaded like 10 photos of your paintings. You can also do it per painting. And what I will do here is I'm going to make them a bit smaller. And on a three basis, let's put them all the way fold up. And what you want to do after you upload some of these galleries is to make sure that people understand that they can buy them. So here what I will do is add a new section, but I'll add it split up. And I'm going to take this one and move it a bit and write down something like 
fine art photography prints. You know what? I have changed my mind. I'm going to take the title and move it to this side and say something like view products or view prints, view prints, for example. And I'm going to center it. And here, what I'm going to do on that side is add a text editor and write down fine art prints, canvases, frame prints and home decor items with my photography are available on my Fine Art America profile or anything else you want to write down. It's, it's your own like, you know, imagination and style. And I'm going to style this one to be placed to the right and style this one to be placed to the left. And you can like click here to view prints or buy prints or stuff like that. And on the view prints, I'm obviously going to keep like a link to my Fine Art America, or I can delete this part and add a button that says shop now or see more or whatever you want. And of course, a link to your Fine Art America that opens in your new window or to any of your shop ideas. And now, this is like a gallery page, right? And it's quite exhausting to have to make it all over again. But that's the thing, you don't have to. We just click on update, and then we hit the little arrow here that says save as template. And I'm gonna call this template gallery page for my photos, and click on save. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna go back to one of my dashboards and go to pages, so Beautiful Nature is a gallery page that I've done, but By the Water is also a gallery page that I want to show more photography that I've done. So I'm going to click on Edit and Edit with Elementor. And this is the part where things get extremely cool. I'm just going to click on Templates here, My Templates, and click Insert. It's going to ask me if I want to completely take over all of the featured sizes, options, and the layout of the page. I'm going to say yes. And would you look at that? Beautiful nature is here again. So I'm going to go on this title and just change it to by the water. Click on the whole area. Go to style. Click on the image and choose a water image that I have. And since I don't have one at the moment, I'm going to go to free images from Pixabay and write down lake. And again, this is not something that I recommend that you do if you sell photography. You should have your own photos. Just for me to crop them right now would be insane. And I'm just going to choose one of these, like this one, and save and insert. And it changed to by the water. And I can go here and change, of course, the text, a collection of photographs I took of bodies of water. These can be large oceans or small lakes found all over the world. And again, if you have graphic design categories, if you have different types of other things that you're selling, obviously, you know, match whatever it is that you're writing to whatever it is that you're doing. And I'm thinking about changing the color a bit to orange because there is orange here on the photo. And what I'll do is I'll collapse this menu to see how it looks. And obviously you will go here and you will edit your gallery and make sure that the photos you have here match the gallery, but I'm not going to do it because I'm just using the same photos all over again. And shop here to buy this collection or to look for it. And I can even match these collections that I have made just now, like these pages for my galleries, and actually match them with the collections that I have on Fine Art America. And you can do the same with the collections that you have on Society6 or on Redbubble or whatever it is that you are selling. And of course, do not forget to update your page. And now we're moving on to a different type of page that we have because we also have pages that were made especially to show that we have everyday items and wall art and decor. So I'm gonna click on edit on one of these pages and you already know the next step because it's edit with Elementor. And what I'll do here is, first of all, I'm going to bring in the template that I just used and insert it and, of course, approve. And this is my wall art and decor page. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the title and basically change it accordingly. Wall art and decor. And here I'm going to write something like, if you like my photography, you can find them. Sorry, if you like my photographs, you can find them on a variety of wall art items as well as home decor accessories. My art is available in different types of wall art. I wrote wall art. It's always important to, by the way, if you're working on a website and you're alone, just read it out loud because you'll see problems if you read it out loud. Canvases, prints, framed and unframed, wooden wall art, metal wall art, and more. You can also find my photography on home decor items such as pillows, shower curtains, towels, mugs, blankets, and more. And I'm writing this because this is all included in this page. If you want to do like a page for your, you know, your art on t-shirts, you can have like a separate one that only talks about, you know, you can find it on t-shirts for men, t-shirts for women, onesies for kids, da, 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 da. And here, what I will do is I will just be changing all of these photos in the gallery to mock-up photos of the wall art. So in this case, I'll just quickly delete all of them, go to add gallery, and just add the photos that I've already downloaded of the mock-ups and insert them. You can make mockups of your own, you can upload more different types of mockups and basically do whatever you want. But what I want to do above this section is to add another section here and grab it up top. Click here, add heading, and write down photography wall art and center it. And mark this area, go to advance. I want to, you know, space it up a bit. So I want it to be padded a bit, photography wall art. And here basically I will have, you know, the gallery of the photos. I'm just duplicating this part, but you can obviously put in all of your different types of wall art. And on this place I will write down, you know, just write down whatever I want to write down on these specific ones on the wall art and the shop now link will go to the wall art and fine art America. And then what I'll do is I'll basically duplicate everything. So I'm going to grab this one duplicate this, grab this one, right click, duplicate this, and grab this one and duplicate it as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab this area, go all the way down to under these two, like place it in between. Because what I love about this, you know, program is called drag and drop. You can just, you know, grab it, drag it up and drag it down. So what I have here is photography wall art. And what I'll do here is photography home decor. And what I'll add here are photos of, you know, the pillows and the towels and everything people get. And this shop now link will basically go to my Fine Art America profiles, Maya Maya Royo, on my shop, let's say like on the home decor department. So that would be the link that I'll be using. By the way, I don't know if you know, if you know this, but I have a group on Fine Art America. It's not obviously as active as the Facebook group, it's nothing like this, but you can also upload all of your photos to the group as well if you're a member of it. I'm gonna leave a link to that down below. I always approve most of the photos unless they are like, you know, damaging or they don't look good. And these are actual photos of people who are in this group who uploaded it. I don't even know how many members we are already. We are 24 members. Do you see yourself? In these people? If so, let me know. I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about doing like a Fine Art America shop review for the people who are members of this group. Please let me know if that is something that is interesting to you. But pish posh that, let's go back to our Elementor. And this is a page, you know, photography wall art and photography home decor and links all over here. And I can really, really repeat this a lot, but what I really want to do after I will update and save the changes is actually go here and save this page as a template and call it products page. So I can do the exact same process that I did with the, both of the gallery pages by going to pages, clicking edit on everyday items, which is another page that we've selected, edit with Elementor, click on my templates, go to my templates and insert product page. By the way, this is not like the last WordPress tutorial that we had with a free website. Everything I'm doing here is live. Like while you're doing it, people can go in and see it. 
But again, as I said, I'm editing the everyday's items. So I'm gonna go here and type in everyday items in the description. Let me just mark this in the description. Let me write just something like, so I just wrote down my photography on everyday items like tote bags, zippered pouches, phone covers, notebooks, yoga mats, and more. And what I'll do here is I can do like photography bags and put in, you know, photos of the tote bags. And I can do here photography mugs. But honestly, if you're doing something like this, you might as well have a single page for each and every one of the types of the item. Like I will do like photography puzzles because it's kind of cool. So just, you know, try and think about your best selling product categories. You know, I, I'm, I'm best selling my stickers or I'm best selling, you know, my notebooks and make these pages for them. But obviously what I need to do here is change the background of this because everyday items, maybe, you know, let's go to style. And here you can put in one of the mock-up photos that you have, or you can just click here because if it's everyday items, so interior design. And just let's add like a nice photograph of a home that seems, oh, this is nice. It's a sofa, it has cushions, save and insert. So everyday items. And I really am looking into this style where I change the text color, basically according to what's in the photo. And this photo is a bit brighter. So what I'm gonna do is go to background overlay and make it a bit darker so people can see the text. I can also manually change this to blue in the style area and update. I also have this one that I did for wall art and decor, which I also haven't changed the back photo, which I can do again. And I know that this might sound weird when you're looking at this, you know, at the first time, but like I said in the beginning, watch this video, you know, with yourselves, like with a notebook and write down the things that you think that you'll need, like all these photos and all these mockups and put that aside. And then when you start the WordPress website, just watch the tutorial as you do it. I think it's like one of the easiest ways to make sure that you're not making any mistakes and that you're doing things correctly. And here in this case, again, of course, I will change the background overlay. And again, change the opacity of the background and grab the text here and change the color up a bit, you know, maybe to orange or something that fits, you know, the back of it. And update. Want to see how it looks? Let's go to pages. And let's just go on to our website. And this is the main page. Artist info with contact page included about me, buy the art, contact me, yada, yada, yada. Everyday items where you can constantly upload, you know, your phone cases or stuff like that, whatever everyday items you want to promote, whatever type of items you want to promote, if it, even if it's fashion, wall and wall art and decor basically the same page because I didn't want to change the pages. Otherwise this tutorial will be very, very long and our gallery photos or gallery photo pages, which are relatively short. And if you want to make, you know, if, if you want to have like fashion or accessories and fun covers and wall art and puzzles and all that, then I'd recommend doing the same thing that we've done with the photo galleries, which is go to a menu, and add a link and the link is going to be just a hashtag and roll these under them as well. And with that being said, let's get back to me because I don't know if you've known this, but there is a website here and it's done. And we're done. I don't know. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the live chat at the side. I believe it's that way. I keep forgetting where it's going to be, but I believe it's that way. So please let me know what you guys thought about this website tutorial. And if any of you are still watching or still alive after this very long video, and you can also let me know if you're not watching this as a live premiere in the comments down below. And of course, if you have any questions about setting up your own website, different themes you might've seen, different concepts you might want to do, or maybe if you just need that little extra pointer of how to do it yourself as a graphic designer or as a watercolor artist, just let me know in the comment section below and I would be happy to help. I'm actually also thinking about making a video that is targeting Etsy sellers who sell printable items. And I'm thinking about doing something like how to set up your own website to give away freebies to basically promote your purchasable products. For example, if you're selling coloring pages, so if you have like a 12 page coloring book, 
that you're selling as printables on Etsy, or if you're selling it as a KDP or any kind of other printed book, then you can have a website that showcases one of these coloring pages for free. So people can download it, and if they like it, they can purchase the full product. Same goes with wall art, with cards, with all kinds of that. So if that is something that is interesting to you guys, please let me know in the comment section below. And with that being said, I'm off to go have some fun in our group and to get ready for tomorrow's video about Instagram marketing as an artist. So see you guys tomorrow and the day after that with the very first shop review video with Elizabeth K, where we went over four shops. And I do have to say that even though most of you were not reviewed in this shop, as we did go over four shops, there is a lot to learn about a person who is at a certain age, from a certain origin, looking at Redbubble and having her own conclusions about what she likes to see and what she doesn't like to see. And I do think that these shop review videos are beneficial for all of us. And that is it from me for today. I'm done. I'm gonna go have fun in our group while chatting with you guys in my cell phone in bed because today has been super long. I don't know if you've seen any of my Instagram posts, but I've like posted like a photo of the life of a YouTuber, which is basically me in my pajamas in front of the laptop when I have like a bunch of dirty dishes in the sink and a lot of dirty laundry. So the exciting life of a YouTuber ends here for today. And if you've seen any of my latest videos, then you know what I'm about to say right now because the live chat is gonna go away in three, two, one, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.